Hello, I'm CJ Wellerman, and this week we reveal what's standing in the way of a desperately needed united Muslim world. But first, please remember to like and subscribe to our show. Now let's get into it. There's a widespread belief that Israel's genocidal actions during the past 10 months have united the Muslim world like no other time in living memory. But as much as I would like to believe this, it sadly just isn't true. Because if the Muslim world were indeed united, truly united, then the mass murder taking place in Gaza would have stopped a long time ago. And we'd now be taking great pleasure from reading the Zionist state's final obituary. Tragically, however, Israel remains very much alive. And with Gaza completely annihilated, as disease and starvation ravages the survivors of its relentless genocide. And while Gaza burns, the leaders of the Arab world continue to fiddle and fuddle, doing absolutely nothing meaningful to counter the Zionist war machine and its criminal occupation. These charlatans care only about acquiring more US weapons and bigger trade deals from the West. The blood of 40,000 innocent Palestinian lives is literally dripping from their hands. This betrayal is well documented, but less reported is the way Iran has received praise from much of the Muslim world, but for doing almost nothing to help the Palestinian people in their desperate hour of need. Now, yes, Iran does provide some weaponry to Hamas, but Hamas is acutely aware that it has no choice other than to beg for Iran's help because the Arab states long ago sided with Israel by turning their backs on the Palestinian resistance. Hamas also clearly understands that the Iranian regime doesn't actually give one single care about the Palestinian people. It uses their struggle for freedom as a means to push Iranian state propaganda into the Muslim world. Even the leader of Hamas admits this. الذي يدعم حماس ويدعم المقاومة ويدعم فلسطين هو مستفيد سلفا لأنه أمام الناس صورة جميلة تتحسن إنه بيدعم فلسطين ويدعم المقاومة لأنه فلسطين قضية مباركة قضية مقدسة عفوا اللي بيدعمها بيربح واللي بيعاديها يخسر يعني, يعني أنتم أستاذ خالد ربحتم إيران إيران كسبت في العالم العربي من يعني بعدما مارست دعما انتهازيا لحركة المقاومة الفلسطينية حماس حماس والجهاد وكان ذلك الدعم ليس من أجل فلسطين إنما من أجل النفوذ الإيراني والدليل أنه لما وصلت الأمور عند النظام السوري توقف الدعم المالي الإيراني تماما عن حركة حماس شوف أخي مع أننا اختلفنا مع الإخوة في إيران سواء في الأزمة السورية أو في ملفات في الوضع العربي في الخليج وفي العراق وفي غيره Ordinary Iranian citizens have also given up on Palestine with recent polls showing they have become apathetic towards Gaza but not because they don't sympathize with the Palestinians, but because they detest the regime's meddling and proxy wars in the region. Which is why during anti-regime protests, Iranians chant, no Gaza, no Lebanon, I die only for Iran. Iranians are now so opposed to the regime's foreign policy objectives that many now chant anti-Palestinian slogans, like they did during this football game on October 9th, the day Israel began bombing Gaza. Again, the purpose of this segment isn't to criticize the people of Iran. They have suffered a great deal under the brutal rule of the Iranian state. Their new apathy towards Palestine is rooted squarely in opposition to their government's colonial project in the Middle East. They don't like it when Iranian leaders boast of occupying and controlling four Arab countries. The Iranian people just want life in their country to be better, fairer and more just, which is the exact same wish every Muslim holds in the Middle East. No Muslim anywhere wants to be sent to die on a foreign battlefield, fighting against other Muslims on behalf of an oppressive dictatorship. Islam calls for struggle against oppression, tyranny and injustice. It calls for jihad in self-defense, jihad against the oppressors. But tragically, no Muslim country is coming to the defense of the Palestinian people or other oppressed Muslim populations for that matter, mostly because unity is absent or lacking and because many are misled by morally corrupt regimes. It's just that simple. Things have to change, and they can change. I really believe that with every fiber of my being. I believe Muslim unity will happen when the roots of disunity are exposed, understood, and counted. I mean, take Hezbollah, for example. When it stood up to Israel and gave it a bloody nose during the 2006 war, Hezbollah became a darling of the entire Arab world. 
It even earned the praise of the late and great Egyptian Islamic scholar Yusuf al Qaradawi, who was revered for his guidance and wisdom, especially on matters related to the Palestinians. When he chaired the International Union of Muslim Scholars, he urged Sunni Muslims and the Palestinian resistance to unify with Hezbollah, which is why he was deeply saddened when the Iranian regime and Hezbollah revealed their true agenda by cleansing Sunni Muslims in Syria to help the Assad dictatorship stay in power. ولكن يبدو ان المشايخ رحمهم الله اذا كانوا موتى وحفظهم الله اذا كانوا احياء كانوا يعني ابصر من هؤلاء الذين دافعت عنهم جاءوا يقتلون اخوانهم في سوريا كنا نظن انهم اخوانهم ولكن قالوا لا واهم الرجال الذين يحاربون الشعب السوري هم من يسمون أنفسهم حزب الله وهم حزب الطاغوت حزب الشيطان استحوذ عليهم الشيطان فأنساهم ذكر الله أولئك حزب الشيطان ألا إن حزب الشيطان هم الخسر Muslim unity will come when the entire Muslim world has a clear view of every actor that stands firmly in the way of this objective a task that requires understanding the motives and objectives of every player in the international system from nation states to sub-state entities, from multinational corporations to non-governmental organizations. But when I ask my Muslim friends to identify those who are inflicting harm on the Muslim Ummah, they typically respond with the United States, Israel, and the entire Western Alliance, including the Arab Gulf states. And indeed they are correct. Well, at least partially correct, because there are many others. A recent tweet I posted speaks to this. Its purpose is to bring attention to the propaganda efforts of Russia, China and Iran, which use the crimes of the Western Alliance as political cover to commit their own human rights abuses and atrocities against Muslims. Everywhere from Chechnya to Crimea and from Syria to Yemen. Palestinians in Syria have long pleaded for the world to understand this. <laughs> مع الشعب السوري وليس مع النظام مخيم اليرموك مثل يد الضبيلة وسبينة والعسالي يعني إذا رفعنا لك العلم يا بشار وإنا لك رفعنا صورك بنحبك يا بشار صرت إله يعني لا شو اللي بدك يا يا إيران يا إيران شو اللي بدك يا شو اللي بدك يا يا إيران أنا ما بقول لبشار أنت يا إيران يا خامي يعني شو اللي بدك يا تعدبحنا تعال إحنا مستعدين للذبح the Iranian regime is arguably the biggest source of division in the Muslim world today. It claims it's the axis of resistance while at the same time bragging about helping the United States invade and occupy two Muslim countries. America is the most important thing about the Taliban. And the most important thing about the Taliban is the first time of the Taliban. I said, let's go to the experience of Afghanistan and the Iraq. تکرار بکنیم منتا این دفعه شیش به علاوه شیش باشه شیش همسایه عراق به علاوه پنج عضو دائم شورای امنیت که آمریکا هم جزو اوناست به علاوه مصر آینده عراق هم برای ایران بسیار مهم بود در همین چارچوبی که ما به افغانستان نگاه می‌کردیم به آینده عراق هم نگاه می‌کردیم نیروهای زیادی در ایران بودن شخصیت‌های برجسته‌ای که می‌تونستان رهبران آینده عراق باشن آینده میشه به این ایران به عنوان نیرویی که می شود با اون مشکلات را حل کرد نگاه کنیم تا خود این را مشکل بدونیم Now here's an exercise for you Name just one non-Muslim country Iran has invaded in the modern era You can't And here's a different question the Iranian regime can't answer اسألك انتو كم امریکی قتلتو انتو من خمسین سنی کم اسرائیلی قتلتم كم اسرائيلي ايران قتلت؟ هلا احنا ما نعطي احنا ما نعطي ارقام لا كم اسرائيلي قتلت؟ لا لا اصبر اصبر كم امريكي قتلتو؟ قتلتو واحد امريكي امبارح انقتل واحد امريكي وكيل ما بعرف شو، شفت شو سوى لكم؟ اصطادك اكبر راس عندكم في ايران اللي هو قاسم سليمان اولا زلمه يا فيصل اولا الهدف الايراني ليس قتل الامريكي ايه؟ اولا الامريكيين محترمين ايه؟ وآمنين في المنطقة وأنا أقول لك بصراحة وعبر الجزيرة أي أمريكي لا يتعرض إلى أي أذى من قبل محور المقاومة. This is not only about Iran. It's also about the devious and deceptive Arab dictatorships 
They continue to feed Israel while it starves the Palestinians to death. Take the UAE, for example. Wherever there's a struggle for liberation in the Muslim world, you will find the Emirati regime standing firmly against it. When it's not committing genocide against Sudanese Muslims, it's sowing chaos in Yemen and Libya, while also lending support to India's occupation of Kashmir. And today, it's laying down cover fire for the Sheikh Hasina dictatorship in Bangladesh, where her security forces are torturing, killing, and disappearing student protesters. Our program is dedicated to naming and shaming all those who stand against the unification of the Muslim world. Because once you identify each one of these actors, then you disempower them by countering their propaganda and deceit. We must imagine a new way forward. Surely, an individual or movement can lead Muslims towards a better future. Someone like the late Egyptian leader, General Gamal Abdel Nasser, who was not only willing to fight Israel militarily, but also wished to unite the entire Arab world. Nasser will never die, chanted crowds of Arabs after the death of their leader in September 1970. For more than a decade, Gamal Abdel Nasser was the spokesman for every cause of the Arab peoples. From Cairo to Beirut, Damascus to Jerusalem, they felt orphaned and wept as much for Nasser as for their own fate during that period of disarray in the Arab world. I envisage a world in which two billion Muslims march together as one towards the goal of ending what has been a perpetual nightmare since the collapse of the Islamic Caliphate in 1919. A collapse that paved the way for European colonial rule in the Middle East and North Africa. A collapse that also paved the way for the Zionist settler colonial project, puppet dictators in Iraq, Iran, Syria and Jordan, and a Muslim genocide in Bosnia. Unity will come when Muslims stop supporting individuals and groups who hate and attack other Muslims. Groups like Hezbollah are just as much motivated by sectarian hatred as ISIS. They are very much two sides of the same coin. You're watching a Hezbollah fighter promising to kill every Sunni Muslim in Syria, which is the exact same thing ISIS did to Shia Muslims in Iraq. I implore you to support only those who call for unity and an end to sectarian hatred, because ultimately a unified Muslim world is the sum total of Israel's worst nightmare. Unity, it's achievable. Let's get it done. But that's my time for today. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and we kindly ask that you please support our effort to expose and confront injustices in the Muslim world by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash CJ We can't produce, sustain and grow this show without your help and we offer exclusive content and benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good morning, wherever you are and stay blessed. Thank you.